Hi here from Brussels, from the Grand Place, here with my Kosovo flag. I make again the case, Belgium has recognized uh, Kosovo and here the Albanians are very welcome. Over there, there is the Albanian shop here with the Albanian flag. I was so happy to see it and I gave my interview in Albanian language. And you know, if Belgium has recognized Kosovo, I think Belgium is a country with um, a lot of structural issues. Yeah. Why cannot Spain then recognize or um, uh, also our friends in Slovakia and also our friends in Romania and also our friends in Cyprus and also our friends in Greece? Yeah? Because all these internal fragilities are not a discussion point uh, for the question of the Balkan peace. Yeah? And so I don't understand exactly why we have these uh, problems of non-recognition today still in these five countries and also in Bosnia, also in Serbia and also in Ukraine and also in Moldova and also in Georgia. It's completely not to be understood because it's not connected. There was a genocide committed by Milosevic and by the Serbian authorities of that time against the Kosovo Albanians. We intervened to protect them. That was a very good thing. We bombed Belgrade. That was a very good thing to do that because it was very necessary to stop the bloodshed. We should do that as well in the case of um, uh, Russia, but of course they have nuclear weapons, so we don't do that. But it is uh, absolutely, we did the right thing and we have liberated this uh, at that time region uh, from uh, this um, dominant center, which was an uh, absolute uh, genocidal state. And that is uh, not the case in Spain. <laughs> And that's not the case in Slovakia, or Romania, or Cyprus, or any other territory region which has re not recognized uh, by their own fragilities or internal misunderstanding or their inability to discuss politics decently because there's differences between uh, the in legitimate uh, separatist secessionist movement like the Catalonian supported by Russia and of course uh, the justified freedom cause of the Kosovo Albanians because uh, you know what happened in their history and what happened in their present and why there was genocide <laughs> and it's absolutely legitimate to call for the dismantlement of Russia and the freedom for Karelia and for Dagestan and for Kalmykia and for Sakar and for um, also this many nations I learned the first time <laughs> now in this uh, conference this week this is all totally justified because they are suppressed by the evil empire Russia and by the Moscow genocidal regime which has lost all the legitimacy. Same has Milosevic at that time. And also then it's very good that we have now seven new countries out of uh, Yugoslavia and we will have about 34, 35, 36 maybe out of the Russian Federation. And it happened the same for the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. It happened the same for the Ottoman Empire. It happened the same uh, for Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union and it will be the same now. So what we need to do is the complete recognition of Kosovo, also the integration in the international organizations from WTO, UN, FAO, UNESCO, Interpol and whatever else there is, where unfortunately on an unjustified basis, on a discriminatory basis, by an unfair world order run by Russia and dominated by China, by communist China and by genocidal Russia, they have not been included up to now. And Serbia has a, a very clear option to recognize or to be isolated. Of course, to smooth the edges, I have made a very nice proposal <laughs> already a long time ago. I have made the proposal that Serbia gets the euro in order to smooth down the edges because as you have seen in the tumult of uh, this week, where in the Serbian parliament there was a major tumult, of course, it's an exciting thing to lose a region and to officially come to terms with it by recognition. But exactly that is what we should ask them for. Because we should ask for recognition. We offer, of course, uh, highways, railways, energy infrastructure, an EU future, not in a long distance like the Macronistias uh, of uh, this uh, confused Macron, but uh, an EU future in 2029 together with Kosovo and Bosnia, if the recognition is happening now. That can be also in a promise. 2029 for all three of them. Of course, we can give Macedonia, Albania, Montenegro already 2024. That is entirely no problem. We can supervise the membership. We can have assisted membership. We can have a membership without voting rights for the beginning. But membership for the free NATO allies is absolutely possible for Kosovo and Bosnia in 2029 as well. Uh, they are very much our EU 
created and supported uh, states and so why to abandon them suddenly. Yeah? It's absolutely possible to put them in the European Union and no, there is no place for Republika Srpska independence because it's based on genocide, it should have never happened. And if you continue to annoy me, my Serb friends in Republika Srpska, I will call for your complete dismantlement. Actually, I have already called for that one. <laughs> Anyhow, so here Kosovo and Bosnia and NATO, that's very clear. And of course, Kosovo in all the institutions fully recognized and obviously as well then 2029 in the European Union. And that's the logical answer to the Russian war in Serbia to get the euro. And in order to make it more credible and more attractive, also Bosnia to get the euro, Albania, North Macedonia, and of course Ukraine needs anyhow the euro. And that I can say as an economist campaigning already quite a long time for that. It's not happening, it makes it only much more expensive and I remind everybody when I was calling already for the EU membership in 2016 as an answer to the Russian war of 2014-15 and ongoing, I said it's much better to integrate Ukraine like Cyprus in the European Union at that uh, kind of uh, occupied borders uh, like we do it in Cyprus and it has worked very well, it would have been possible then my friends in Brussels who are all dreaming about their retirement here said Günther that's too complicated, we have a headache with Cyprus, we don't want it, it's too expensive <laughs> and now we pay 5 billion euros monthly for Ukraine in war and we have a reconstruction cost to carry from 750 and the MEP on this conference didn't allow me to answer that question about how to fund the uh, Ukraine reconstruction uh, and the, the kind of reparations and obviously Russia or the post-Russian states after the breakup of Russia will not pay anything. What we can do is just to confiscate of course the Russian assets in the European Union or in Western jurisdiction where we have access and the rest we have to pay ourselves. And of course, you know, it can be a bit compensated with one, some of the assets we can confiscate, but the most of the caravan will be on the back of the European economy and European taxpayers. And it is also justified because uh, we have uh, the responsibility to uh, defend and defeat. But just to make the point how expensive it would have been in comparison uh, to uh, how much cheaper it would have been to integrate uh, Ukraine already in the beginning and treated like Kosovo. Uh, I have argued that many times after 2015 or 16 when I was in Ukraine, but it was not to be and we didn't do it because it was too expensive and now it's much more expensive and uh, now Ukraine is absolutely like Kosovo. With Kosovo I mean it as a compliment but also as a country which is of course in the war and under major Economic circumstances, a uh, war torn country which needs to be integrated, same like Kosovo, which needs to support it, same like Kosovo, which needs the Euro, same like Kosovo, which needs to be in the uh, NATO, same as Kosovo. And that was the logic of it all. And that's what I said all the time already. And it was not happening. And I asked myself, why? <laughs> because it was so foreseeable. Huh? I was with my EU flag, and this is not the EU flag, but with my EU and NATO flag I have with me as well. I was in Mariupol in, uh, in February 2022. I raised my flag here. The EU didn't listen. I wrote my articles. Please find a line. Come to visit Mariupol and protect it because it's very clear that Putin will attack. He has already 200,000 soldiers on the other side and he really hated uh, that he couldn't take Mariupol in 2015 and 14 and he took revenge in 2022 and it was obvious for anybody who read the history of the events in 14, 15, 16, or lived there. And I told it to everybody, but yeah, the European Union decision makers, they learn only in during war, then there is a movement for change. And we now need to integrate Kosovo and Ukraine. And that's the way forward. And the recognition of Ukraine by Kosovo is absolutely necessary. And that's what I'm calling for. And I'm calling for that very much so. Thanks a lot and best regards here from this ancient trading center, this beautiful square and also the capital of NATO and the EU. And please EU join NATO, something else I say all the time, in order to have the possibility, uh, first of all, more unity, clarity that you have to join NATO before you can join the EU, Serbia, but also the ability for Serbia, uh, no, for the United Kingdom to return to the European Union because that's the much better way. And please, wherever you are, you very annoying Romanians, Slovakians, I fight for you. 
for the Slovakians and the Romanians to join EU and NATO, for the Romanians now to join with um, the Schengen. <coughs> And for Spain, I'm not uh, so old that I fought for Spain, NATO, that was in 82, and not in that generation, but I always supported Spain wherever I could, and I uh, reject Catalan independence, but I called for Spain to recognize, uh, of course, uh, Kosovo very much so, and Greece, I will visit you, <laughs> and I will have my Kosovo flag. And please recognize Kosovo, the same for Cyprus, to be united in NATO and in the EU and in the Euro as a federal state, the like, same like Germany. These were the words of Genscher and he argued for your membership in 2004. I was myself there and you should also do the same for Kosovo. Thanks a lot. Here from Brussels, more to come from Pax Europeana. Bye.